Hi, I'm Stephen Pam, PCDU's video guy, and it looks like I've finally found a way to get myself into one of the videos. There were a number of biz jets on static display at the Australian International Air Show 2013, and if we're talking ramp presence, there's not much that beats showing up in your own Airbus A319. Grant McHeron caught up with the folks from Airbus Corporate Jets to learn more about this impressive limo of the skies. David Valupillier, welcome to Playing Crazy Down Under. Thank you and welcome to the Airbus ACJ319, which as you can see has the widest and tallest cabin of any business jet. I understand that this uh, aircraft is used for uh, uh, corporate charters and so on, uh, VIP charters? Yes, this aircraft is operated by Comlux, it's a Swiss company and it charters out this aircraft to people that have got the need to travel in this kind of privacy, comfort and security and it's one of a number of companies around the world that have something like 15 Airbus corporate jets available for charting. Uh, is this a fairly typical interior layout for an Airbus corporate jet for, I mean there's always extremes on either end, uh, but w would this be a fairly typical interior design? Yes, this is representative of the kind of interior that a private customer would choose for their Airbus corporate jet. People are looking to take comfort and space into the sky, the kind of comfort, space, lifestyle that they would have at home or in their office. They want to take it with them when they travel. And because we have this very wide and very tall cabin, we can allow them to put into the cabin that kind of style, elegance, comfort and space. What people are also typically looking for are practical things like a table at which to, to sit, either to work or to eat. Uh, they're looking for somewhere to sleep, so we have seats that convert into beds. They're looking for somewhere to wash, and so we have uh, a couple of very beautiful bathrooms in this aircraft. Quite spectacular bathrooms. I've honestly got to say I've never seen a bathroom quite so wonderful in an aircraft before, so very impressive. Now, one of the issues in any aircraft is, of course, weight and balance, centre of gravity, etc. So, with all of this equipment on board, uh, the beautiful tables and so on, how does that compare to having an Airbus A319 with uh, passenger seats and standard uh, domestic operations? You do have to worry about making sure that you've got the right centre of gravity. So, that's something you would take care of in laying out the cabin design, where you put the the office that converts to a bedroom where you put the club four seats like this and so on. And what we do as a manufacturer is work with the cabin outfitter to ensure that center of gravity is taken care of. As with any aircraft, you're always trying to minimize the weight because an aircraft that is lighter burns less fuel. And as with any aircraft, we're also making sure that safety is taken care of. So for things like flammability and emissions, we're also using materials that meet those standards. And everything, again, with an aircraft has to be engineered properly and also certificated. There are typical materials like this uh, exotic wood on the table. They're a feature that's often used. You would use other noble materials like leather. And the idea is to make what is essentially a very wide and tall tube into something that's more like a, a home, nice surroundings. Something else we can do which others can't is this domed ceiling. You don't need it for headroom. I'm tall and I'm well below the, the ceiling. But it does give a very nice ambiance to all this comfort and space. Now, we're currently in an Airbus three, A319. Uh, that's not the only corporate jets that Airbus produces, of course. Uh, every aircraft in your line can be made into a corporate jet. That's right. We have the world's most modern aircraft family. And what we do is take that family and transform them into corporate jets. So for this aircraft, the Airbus ACJ319, we've made some changes which includes extra fuel tanks in the cargo holes to give the aircraft intercontinental range. We've given the aircraft, of course, this kind of VIP interior 
And we have a number of other improvements such as the high thrust versions of the engine so we have good takeoff and landing performance we've got a slightly higher cruise altitude for efficiency and, and better routings and put that together in a, a package and you've got in the ACJ 318, ACJ 319, ACJ 320, ACJ 321 a family of aircraft which can offer a lot to the private customer. Now I've seen in your marketing material that there's also an ACJ 380 uh, which means that there's potential out there that somebody could buy the big A380 passenger jet that can carry between five and eight hundred passengers and use it just for themselves. That's right, we have won an order from a Middle East customer. That aircraft will have a floor space of about 551 square meters. So that's the equivalent probably of about five houses. And the aircraft can be used in different ways. So a government might want a large aircraft because it's going to transport a delegation of say 100 passengers. Because when a head of state travels, they will typically travel with their senior government advisors, perhaps also some ministers. You might have industrialists, uh, chief executives of companies as part of the delegation, and of course you might have some media too. So for some missions, you do actually need a wide body, and of course because Airbus has got that very comprehensive modern aircraft family, we can offer the customer the size that they need and the comfort that they want. Excellent. As, as much opulence as they can afford. And, and sometimes <laughs> the customer wants an aircraft that's the biggest because yep. he wants to have the biggest yep. and the best. Now I've seen some of your designs also which have what looks like some classic business class seats right. and the whole aircraft is full of those and it's clearly designed for transporting management types and executives but more functional style of transport of, of, of people rather than uh, the so-called big wig luxury transporters. Yes you can have uh, corporate shuttles with say 48 seats all business class or you can do what some governments do which is to have a small section in the aircraft which is a VIP section perhaps a, an office that converts to a bedroom and the rest of the aircraft is either economy class seating or business class seating so then the aircraft can do a dual role it can transport troops or passengers but it can also do the VIP mission when you need to transport a head of state or a minister. And could those be uh, pluggable modules so you could wheel, pull that, that uh, VIP section out and replace it with other seats? Yes, that's another possibility is to have a VIP kit where you would remove some business or economy seats and install temporarily something like a, an office that converts to a bedroom. So incredibly versatile aircraft to uh, help make sure that executives can be fully functional while traveling around the world and also very good for transporting uh, the team or somebody in total opulence. It's, it's quite a range of what you can do with an Airbus corporate jet. Indeed, what we've done of course is take an aircraft which is designed to have robust reliability for the rigors of airline service where the aircraft may be flying six, seven, eight sectors every day so it needs to be very reliable and of course that's important to the corporate jet customer and so we take that and then we support the aircraft with first of all the worldwide Airbus support network we have more than 500 customers and operators around the world on the airline side as well as the corporate jet side and we have a worldwide network of training centers of spares centers and about 170 technical specialists dotted around the world. So wherever an Airbus corporate jet customer flies, chances are there's going to be a near nearby airline which can help out if they need a spare part or, or some maintenance. David, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate the fact that you've given us this time on a very busy day, and uh, we look forward to exploring some more of the aircraft now. Thank you for visiting the Airbus ACJ. Thanks, mate. Captain Robin Percy, Hello. welcome to uh, Plane Crazy Down Under. How are you going? I'm very good, very good. My first visit to Melbourne.
you're with uh, Airbus in the corporate Correct. jet area, and Correct. you're one of the lead pilots here. Uh, yep, I've been flying, I flew Airbus A320 number no. 3 23 years ago. I've been flying for Airbus for nearly 20 years, and uh, I was head of training for Airbus for 10 years, and I'm now uh, the chief pilot of the Airbus corporate jet fleet. Excellent. How did you get into flying with Airbus? What got you started flying? <clears throat> Um, because I was flying, I was flying the aircraft for customers, uh, for for airlines, and very early days I was involved in the entry into service of the airplane with several customer airlines, so I knew the Airbus pilots well, and uh, as happens in this in this world, um, you find yourself between jobs. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I found myself looking for a job and I knew the Airbus people so I, I, uh, I, I came to work for Airbus initially as a training captain. Okay. And uh, so now we're currently sitting in the cockpit of this AC319. Yes. Yep. Now you're telling me that this is completely uh, standard aircraft. The aircraft is essentially a standard airplane. Um, it, it, it's very small changes are made in, in the production run. Uh, depending on the fuel requirements for the for the customer, but the airplane is essentially a standard aircraft with additional the capability of additional fuel. Okay, and I understand that the additional fuel is carried in some cargo containers. We carry we can carry six additional tanks. Uh, five is the, is the most the most would normally carry, uh, but as the customer will decide depending on his mission how many tanks he wants, and the tanks are essentially uh, standard cargo containers. So they move in and out, they can be put on, taken off, uh, you can have three, you can have five. really depends whether you want to carry cargo space or not. About how long does it take to change in and out a couple of containers? You can do it overnight, basically. It's, it's not something which you can do in a two-hour turnaround, but it's an overnight exercise. And if, in, if indeed the person comes back with a bit more shopping than they expected? It's just... a little bit more complicated than that, but yes. You can, but you can choose not to fill a tank, or uh, no. The, 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 you either have the you either have the space available, or you don't. So okay. you either have you want three tanks, then you have cargo space. If you uh, if you want if it's if it's you, the wife, and carry on baggage, five tanks, no problem. If you turn up with a truckload of shopping, then the truckload has to go somewhere, and so the the mission would be uh, three tanks or five tanks, but it would be there more or less on a long-term basis. Okay. You wouldn't be changing tanks on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. So now this is a completely standard Airbus cockpit. <coughs> Absolutely but, standard. But there's got to be some way of controlling the extra fuel. Yep. So can you show us how that's done? Yep. The extra fuel, we have a controller on the roof here. In fact, the whole system is fully automatic, so I don't actually control anything. Uh, in exactly the same way as a standard airliner, I tell the airplane how much fuel I want and the airplane does it for me. And as long as the system is on, and pumps are on, and the aircraft engines are running, then the fuel delivery is automatic. Okay. If I have a problem, then I have a control panel. So the only difference between this airplane and the standard aircraft is the control panel for the fuel system here. And that would only be used if there was a problem with the system. And then it shows you on the screen. With... And it shows me on the screen. Okay. And can you show us what yep. the screen? Fuel pumps are selected on the roof, and then we have a standard uh, fuel system here with a center tank, uh, two wing tanks, two tip tanks, and in this case we have the additional fuel carried in the ACT. Now, this aircraft has three ACTs. In fact, all the airplane tells me is the total fuel in the ACTs, which at the moment is zero. Quite impressive. Yes. That's the only change. And the airplane is, fuel handling, fuel system is fully automated. So effectively, if you're a, a type-rated Airbus pilot in this family of aircraft, <coughs> you could be flying for someone all around the world. Absolutely, yes, 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 yes absolutely. And, and if, if you are a type-rated pilot on this aircraft, and you fly this airplane today for the first time, it is exactly the same as the one you flew yesterday. So there's no need for any cross-training, you've just got no to be aware of it. No need for cross-training, we, we, you, you, should, you should be aware of how the system works, so um, we would like you, please, to let's look at the book before you, <laughs> before you start. But basically, that's all you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, as we were hearing previously with David, 
uh, you're able to plug into the uh, Airbus Worldwide Network of Support. Correct. So it's a common uh, aircraft. This aircraft, we're now number 6,000, I think, is flying. So we, we have aircraft all around the world. We have servicing all around the world. A, an aircraft like this, uh, again, it would depend on the owner and how the owner would want to operate. Most owners will carry a flight engineer. The flight engineer will look after the airplane when the aircraft is on the ground. Um, you don't need to carry a flight engineer if you're operating into an area where you know you have servicing capability. So because these aircraft would, will, the owner will decide he wants to go somewhere tomorrow and that place may not be the most convenient place, then they carry an engineer. But quite a few, quite a few operators will not because they're flying into ma major airports, they know they can get servicing, it's a very easy op option for them. One final question. Now, you are as chief pilot for the corporate jet line. I guess you're able to fly every Airbus that can become a corporate jet? Every airplane that we make can be a corporate jet and is either flying as or will fly as a corporate jet. So you've got and, the ratings? And yeah, I have the ratings on all of them, yes. Okay. Um, and because of the commonality of the flight there, I can jump from this aircraft to the 330 to the 340 and I see exactly the same thing. The 380 is a more uh, modern presentation, but the operation is identical. Yep. And so I have a different interface, but I operate the aircraft in exactly the same way. Excellent. So any pilot flying any Airbus type can fly any other Airbus type, providing he understands how the system works. Captain Robin Percy, thank you very much nice for uh, taking nice some time to run us through the cockpit. Nice to meet you. Thanks, mate. So, if you reckon you could see yourself getting around in one of those, you should probably start saving. As far as we can tell, the list price is around $80 million. As they say, if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it. For more Avalon 2013 coverage, visit plainecrazydownunder.com. Southern Skies, online media. Plane Crazy Down Under is sponsored by Jet Ride Australia. Oz Runways, know where you're going. Red Baron and Sennheiser. Sennheiser S1 Digital, the quiet revolution in aviation headsets. Our Avalon 2013 coverage is brought to you by Avplan. Get more in your EFB. Classic Flight Bag, for those who identify the sky as their office, grab your bag and go. Eco 2000's ZI400 Aircraft Colloidal Cleaner. Regular airframe washing is an important part of corrosion protection. World Flight Planner. Plan your flight like a pro and get worldwide coverage with World Flight Planner. And SmartShots Commercial Photography. Join the in-depth discussion on all topics aviation related at planecrazydownunder.com or search iTunes for Plain Crazy Down Under. Hi, I'm Anthony Simmons from The View From The Lounge. And I've sat in some pretty interesting seats in planes over my time in association with PCDU. I sat in the pilot seat of a B-52 bomber. I even sat in the pilot seat when I did my recent trial instructional flight. But now I've just whirled through this really impressive piece of aviation kit and I've found my new seat. Yes, this is my lounge in the air. Bye folks.